by Fianna Fáil leader Micheál Martin, who is imminently facing the prospect on the 26th of June of being elected the first Taoiseach in a rotating arrangement. Welcome to the programme. You've obviously made considerable uh, progress. You've got tripartite agreement on a document. You've got the parliamentary parties to adopt it. But, but I have to ask you about your own U-turn on this. Uh, I interviewed you right throughout the 2016 election. No way. After the election, no way would you have a grand coalition. In the, in the election, you recall the pac Kenny debate, and Leo actually put forward in that the idea of cooperation of the two parties, and you said you would not form a grand coalition. And you went, you went further and you said, Fine Gael need to come out of government, they've been there too long, they haven't delivered on key issues, and housing and health, and the impact on the cost level. At what point did you change your mind? Well, first of all, the result itself was, was, was significant. Uh, in terms of we didn't get the number of seats that we wanted. We have a much more fragmented Dáil than anyone anticipated with eight political groupings. We're in the midst of, of an unprecedented crisis with COVID-19, not just a health crisis, but so many families have lost their loved ones and many others have become ill, but thousands and thousands of jobs have been lost. And there was, a, 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 without question, no, but, but without fairness, question, enormous... This didn't come as a bolt out of the blue. During the election, even Leo Radker looked at the possibility that the two parties may be needed. Were you not disingenuous in telling voters and your own support no, you it, wouldn't do what you're now no, doing? No, we, we put before the people our... Man, our, our programme for government, um, sought a mandate on that. Um, we didn't get the number of seats um, that we wish to get. And I think there is an obligation in the aftermath of a general election to do your best to form a government uh, along a common set of policies that can be agreed in the interests of the Irish people, not in the interests of your own party. Uh, we did it after 2016 through a confidence and supply approach. Uh, and this time the party gave me a mandate after the election to enter into discussions. We produced a framework document which had a set of principles. The Green Party Sub substantively engaged in that uh, framework document and has led to the programme for government that but we do, now but have. But you not accept that I, on the issue of grand coalition <coughs> that you've been a bit of a slow learner is, insofar as in 2016 you had the very same offer. You got nothing out of confidence and supply. You lost seven seats and therefore you've actually wasted from the party's point of view the last four years. Well sorry we didn't get the very same offer at all. It was a much different process completely uh, what happened in 2016 to what happened now. This is a tripartite uh, government. Uh, it's not a grand coalition, it's three parties, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and the Green Party. The programme is transformative. It does represent a new departure in terms of the kind of society we want to create, uh, in terms of giving people access to housing, access to healthcare in a more timely manner, and critically tackling the crisis of our time beyond COVID, the climate change issue. Uh, and I think it is transformative in itself. Uh, and it, has, it is difficult. It's not easy. Uh, we would have much preferred to have been in a stronger position. Um, and, you know, we, if you look at over the last number of years, we've had Brexit, which has been a significant threat to us. Now we have COVID-19. And what I'm getting across the country is most people are saying, will you go away and form a government, please? Don't put your own parties first. Put the people first. There are thousands of people out there who may not have jobs well, to go back to. has to have a government. And, and there's that. businesses out okay, there who Let's want talk about the ratification process. In your own party, there's a group of uh, people looking for a fairer future. Over a thousand members, 50 councillors, saying that, that, that this could see Fianna Fáil, historic party, submerging its identity. And people like Eamon O'Keefe really concerned because they're looking at Fianna Fáil, 14% on the polls, and they feel you may sink without trace. Yeah, people thought that 10 years ago as well, and it didn't happen. And it's not about the party's inserts first. Fianna Fáil was always best. Uh, in government, in my view, historically, from 1932 onwards. It always put the country first. It all, the, the, there was issues around the crash in terms of global. We did make mistakes. But in terms of the housing programs of the 30s, 60s, free education, we did radical stuff, the Good Friday Agreement. So my point is, we're actually far better historically proven in government than out of government. That would be my view. But also the country must come first. The people come before party all of the time, in my opinion, as a politician. I represent people. Uh, I'm nominated by Fianna Fáil to run in, in a general election and have been for many, many years and privileged to be so. But people elect me from many well, persuasions. What's your message to Fianna Fáil members me. who are that, that is my message to Fianna Fáil members. Uh, that our obligation is to the people. 
not just to ourselves and our own self-advancement. It's to the people of Ireland. It's to the young generation who are coming out of colleges, who need jobs. It's to the self-employed in the businesses, the engine room of this economy. It's to them we owe our allegiance to and the people that we must help in government. Uh, and also in terms of, the, I think the party, its visibility, uh, a new generation coming up who could become ministers as a result of this, I think that would be very beneficial and will help the party as well, Are you along with helping the country. Over 20,000 members, complex procedure. Are you confident it will be raffled? I think we will, um, hopefully. I, I'm not taking anything for granted. Uh, this is the first time ever we've done this, and I was the leader that recommended that we had a special Ardesh back in 2012 to ratify a programme for government. We changed the rules of the party in 2012 to enable that to happen. Uh, we couldn't hold the Ardesh because of COVID-19. So now this is the first time ever I'd say in the history of any political party uh, on the island that we're having a kind of a ballot of this kind on a formation of okay. government and program well, for government. And I think, look, that in itself means there's going to be vigorous debate. Uh, but so far, the feedback has been very positive from councillors and from members, and I'm, we're getting feedback on a daily basis from county by county. Uh, so, th so that's positive. But of course, you know, other parties have their electoral well, processes as well. That's where I want to yeah. go to is, is on the issue of the Green Party. So let's say Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil ratified. The bar is higher with the Greens two-thirds. There's talk of hundreds of members from Northern Ireland. There's talks of recent people from Extension, uh, Extinction Rebellion have joined the Green Party who've come out tonight against it. If it happens, and it's beyond your control, that the Green Party don't ratify it, despite their best attempts, the Taoiseach Leo Varadkar said there would be a political crisis. Do you have, in your own mind, a contingency plan, a plan B, if that happens? We don't have a plan B here. Um, and the bottom line is this, the Taoiseach is correct, that we, are, we will be in a full-blown political crisis. The Offences Against the State Act has to be passed. That's significant in terms of uh, the, 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 law, the law and order situation and, and, and serious crime and gangland crime in particular. Um, it also, in my view, you know, uh, to me this is a historic opportunity on the climate change agenda. Um, it is a very strong document in terms of transport, in terms of energy efficiency, in terms of biodiversity. Uh, I think there are very, very significant commitments made there in that document, which I'm happy to, to, to agree with because I'm, it's an open door as far as I'm concerned. We need but, to do but, this. But let's be serious about this. The, the choreography is quite tight. You, you're very looking tight. at ratifying it on the Friday and going to come. Like, there's either possible contingency, but you renegotiate with the Greens if it's a close vote, or you plough on regardless with Fine Gael and try and get independence. Do any of those options, would well, you rule well, out any of those options? I think it's point is, it's speculation at this stage. But, uh, in, but in it's very serious. It is very serious. That The vote is very serious. The vote on, in each party, that every member in each party takes, is a very serious vote with very serious Are you ruling out further negotiation? With the Green Party? On the, on, the well, I mean, for, on the programme for government? I can only speak for Fianna Fáil, uh, and I think this has been a very lengthy process and a very detailed process involving all of the parties and their negotiating teams. I mean, it was 4 a.m. in the morning on last Saturday, and then we had a lengthy session on Sunday between the th three party leaders. It's been talked... You know, what been, do you make of some of the Green negotiators and, sitting here last night saying that they couldn't find it in them to, to vote for it? I found that... That's a hurricane. Well, I mean, people are entitled to their own perspectives, but I found that, personally, I, I found that uh, difficult in the sense that uh, they know the, the challenges. Uh, they also would, I think, have to accept that there was a significant progress made, uh, both on the economic principles uh, that people negotiated in terms of, of uh, particularly in the first half, you know, of, of government and the, the whole concept of deficit balancing ultimately, which I think we all ha have agreed to, uh, and the Green Party has agreed to that, but critically also a stimulus package in July uh, to try and stimulate jobs in the economy, particularly hospitality and tourism in the SME sector, and then a, a, a full-blown economic plan for the budget in October that would look at a three- to four-year period in terms of planning our way out of COVID-19 and economic uh, impact well, well, and engineering and economic Let's recovery. go to the content so of I the programme. Uh, okay. okay, the content of the programme. I put it to you. It is ridiculous and not credible not to cost the programme. Because if you say you're going to build 50,000 houses, it's possible to say 250 grand a house. If you say implement slauncher care, three and a half billion, these things cost money. Even aside all the fudges of the reviews and the task forces and the commissions and so on. Why isn't it costed? No programme for government has ever been costed. And, go, and, go, and sorry, in a situation where go we back, have... Go back over, no programme for government ever gets costed. Well, put, put it and like it would be, we're not, No one ever does five budgets at a programme for government. It's never been costed. Okay. Now, there are specifics in there. And one of the more key specifics is the carbon 
fund and that we legislate to hypothecate that fund. In other words, any funding from the carbon tax goes into a fund, and over 10 years that would realise 9 billion on average is, is the estimate. We're saying 5 billion of that goes to retrofitting houses, uh, which would be a huge energy, effic energy efficiency gain. Um, secondly, uh, that there would be 3 billion provided to prevent fuel poverty, and critically, 1.5 billion for a new rep scheme for farmers, environmental schemes in farms, such as the growth of native, na native trees and so on, the growing of them, and developing alternative income streams for farmers. Now, that's one clear uh, specific there uh, that I think would make uh, okay. represent a very fundamental... Well, and also just transition in areas former, like the Midlands... As a, as a that former, we can minister, put, as a former minister, minister, you know, the government takes it all in a tax and it does it all in spending. This programme says you will not increase income taxes, USC, and those taxes. I mean, the ESRI and everyone rocked up before the COVID committee saying... That is untenable. Do you not accept, notwithstanding no detailed costings, that that just isn't credible and is actually dishonest? But there are also are provisions in there for other revenue-raising measures. I just mentioned the carbon uh, tax, which is up front, and we're saying it in the programme. I'd say one of the first programmes for government ever. Uh, now, we had supported this in, in, in opposition last year because we believed this, you know, that climate change is real. We have to provide for just, just transition in areas like the Midlands that will suffer because of measures around climate change and, and create alternative enterprises. We've also provided there for any other taxes in terms of tax on plastic or any human behaviour areas to, to create revenue. Uh, and also we're looking at the social insurance. But, but well, sorry, we're looking the, at the social insurance. The same way as the manifesto we're looking promises, at this, no, we're looking at the, the time were rubbish, we're looking, this could be false stones. We're looking at the social insurance system as well. Uh, in, so PRSI could of, go up? But that, that's a possibility in the future. There's a commission on pensions being established because uh, we do have to, if people want further benefits, now that would be to create benefits for people as well, uh, in self-employed and others uh, who are working for quite a long time, if there, some of that is happening in terms of dental benefits and so on, and people may want further benefits into the future. We, we've made so, it clear so in the what, what you're saying is... PRSI will go up, carbon no, taxes will, will go up, or no, are possibly going, and maybe capital taxes go up? No, there are options there. No, the, the, the capital taxes won't, in terms of the property tax, will not be going up. Um, the, um, but in terms of, there are other revenue generating measures that are identified there as potential well, what about revenue public sources. sector pay? Are you happy to pay the increase in public sector pay in October? Look, one of the great, uh, I think, revelations of COVID-19 has been the performance of our public service particularly our healthcare workers at the cold face, but many others as well. What it demonstrates is we do need a solid, strong, effective public service in any democracy. No. So the answer is yes. No, the current agreement will be fulfilled. However, we will seek to, to negotiate a new agreement, but that will be, of course, in the context of very, very challenging economic okay. figures. Just and what, we would like, and I, I, what I would like to do in discussing this with social partners is to say the number one priority facing the country from now on has to be restoration of jobs okay. and helping people in the private okay. sector to get back to work. OK. As you know, you've seen the polls. Something like two and a half times more people want Leo to stay on Tisha because you. What's your message to the nation in terms of this is a time for huge leadership? I mean, the, the, I've never seen in 40 years anything like the challenges, economic, public health, employment. It's just unbelievable. Uh, and, and, and you're starting on a new road and a historic step with, with Fine Gael. Well, what, what, are you up to it? I mean, like, you know, can you inspire the people? I am up to it, and I think the very fact that we've negotiated this programme for government is demonstra demonstrates our commitment jointly, three leaders of the three parties and the parties themselves, uh, to f face this challenge and to work on behalf of the people. That's our obligation. Uh, that's why we are in politics. That's why we put ourselves before the people. But you've been a member of three previous governments. Do you accept this will be the toughest road yet? Yes, I do. And, 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 and you're I prepared think, to also, be unpopular? And also, yes, uh, I've been unpopular before. Uh, yes, I am, because it's, it's the right thing to do. But also, it's not about popularity either. Uh, you know, in, in all the various ministries I served in, uh, I did things that necessarily one might have anticipated would not have been popular, but I still went ahead and did them. Okay. Uh, and I think I've demonstrated in different departments okay. a, capacity, a capacity to be radical and to do what's correct okay. in the interests of the people. Finally, you're the same age as me, which means you're definitely getting old. Uh, you, you, you've, if disagreed and it goes ahead, you would no longer be Taoiseach after December 2022. Do you intend to lead Fianna Fáil after that? Yes. Uh, what will happen, and this is a government for four to five years, uh, and the rotation means... You know, I would then become tarnished, and the tarnished becomes Taoiseach. That's the way it would work out. And so, that's important in terms of the cohesion 
durability and solidity of the government to get decisions that will these decisions we take now and in the next year will have to sustain over the four to five years. Final period. question. I asked you on the eve of the election to describe Leo in one word and you eventually came out with the word spin. Do you think Taoiseach, uh, Leo Varadkar is someone that you can trust and work with in difficult times? I think so. I think we've the last six weeks, longer, uh, three leaders have engaged uh, and I think we've got to know each other a bit better. Uh, obviously, we come from three different parties. So the, the one word now three, is, if not three, spin, three, Don't start that again. <laughs> come there again. <laughs> right, it's solidarity now. A willingness it? to engage. <laughs> willingness to engage. Well, look, for the country's sake, we wish you well, and we await developments. Thank you indeed Thank for joining you. us on The Tonight Show. After the break, Michael healy Ray and why he wants special exemption for Kerry for COVID restrictions, and we'll be discussing the reopening of pubs. and.